We're going to take a walk on the wild side. We're going to look into the soil for tubers. We're going to observe the trees and see what nature is going to surprise us with today. You might know these avocado pears. It just seems abundance is flavor of the day. There's so many avos here. I don't know, guys. What do you think? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> okay, so, but I'm not getting all serious. We're going to go and find some beautiful tubers. Seeds I put in the ground a whole year ago. I haven't done anything. Nature's been watering, mulching and everything for me. And kindly, the bush pigs haven't even bothered my stash. Okay, so we're going to go and I'll show you a relatively dry looking patch, but we're going to identify the Jerusalem artichokes. Follow their stems down and harvest some nice nuggets. Okay, let me introduce you to this beautiful banana tree. I planted it in the ground about one year ago. She was this big. She was one banana tree. About a year later, she's got her natural family formation. So this is how you can spread the love, you can spread the fruit forest by um, harvesting the banana. If we swing the camera around here, we can see another little crop here. This one in about a year would have done the same. Formed herself, brought through her family and friends, and so the fruit forest happened. I want to see fruit all over the floor. Mm. Okay, so this I'm really proud of. Even if the plant looks like it's a little bit tired for a while, be patient, she'll get her roots down, she will be your banana forest. Oh, yes! <laughs> a man shot. Mm -hmm. So what we have here is a Jerusalem artichoke. Later in the season, the entire plant in fact dried up. You can see it had giant, beautiful flowers. This is a root vegetable. So you might look here and think, there's no food. Think again. The dead pots. I've already made peace with my garden. But you see, these are much of the root system. This is not even edible, but we're going to dig in to here. And look what Mother Nature has cooked. Gigantic Jerusalem artichoke. I have bought a fork, but I'm going to use it gently so I don't tear the actual fruit. Lots of stems, which means the entire patch will just be. These are a delicacy, a lot of people make an apple chief soup out of them. So, <coughs> this is already actually it's an overgrown bed, but it's actually mulched, so we have all from the soil, it's not compressed. So, I can very easily and lightly garden it because I haven't compressed my soil. Look at this, endless nuggets. Mm. Nuggets, heavenly mm. nuggets. Isn't that beautiful? You can roast these, throw over some olive oil and throw them in and lightly roast them. You can boil them, make the soup. You can literally leave them underground for the month of winter. And whenever you want some fresh soup, you come down and look for everywhere under these stems is going to be a mound of beautiful uh, mineral rich tubers. And I'm just, if you want to bring the camera around here, it's just exquisite. I'll show you what I'm discovering in here. These are beautiful white flesh, pristine, sterile almost. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. This is um, bush pig's favorite food. Oh, my goodness, we have a giant sleeping centipede. <laughs> Do you want to bring the camera here? This is incredibly... You see, it's essentially quite a dangerous creature, but... Can you see her? <laughs> That's organic soil, full of life. Do you see her? As long as you don't bother her, she's gone away. I can carry on digging for my tubers. Even the leopard will not bother you. Can you see? Are you getting this? It looks beautiful. Mwah. I just keep going. They're beautifully mm. stacked. Look at that. It just gets bigger and bigger. So these are a one-year crop. 
the trick is, once you've harvested, you literally make sure you leave one little one in there. You can push it all back over just to not leave the bare soil. We're not going to be losing quality. Ooh, look at these. Nature's really pouring out now. Now that she knows she's on camera. <laughs> look at this, guys. See how the reason I'm enjoying the harvesting is I have not compressed the soil. We basically mulch it. It's like a raised bed, but left to nature. No one walks on it after that. And then you have this fantastically... Look at this. Oh my goodness. And this, this is one of my favorite things. And again, the ones you want to leave behind are see just a little one. Take the big ones for your pot, for your family. Leave a few for the cane rats and bush pigs. And of course for next year's growth. But these plants are exceptional. Even that is a seed. And during the... Can I have that seed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Sure thing. Are these are my mothers. Hmm. Look at that. I mean, isn't Beautiful. that amazing? Hmm. What looks like a dry bed. I mean, just keep that camera rolling. Cause this just keeps coming. <laughs> wow. Holy shivers. Look at that. That should be just about enough for roasting up. Big pot of soup. Hmm. Look at all these seeds. Sure. Let me do one more dig. I've always wanted to share this because every time I dig in the garden, I'm burning away. Overwhelmed, eh? Hey? Overwhelmed with joy by what it has to offer. Just overwhelmed. Okay, and then most important, goodness sake, unless you're a bush pig, but even the bush pigs will leave it a bit more. Move <laughs> it over. See, just that. Mm. So this way, I'm not destroying everything. But I've just looked down here and seen such a big nugget. So the birds sound so happy here. Singing away. Again, I'm not standing on the bed. Hmm. It's actually designed, it's actually sacred geometry, believe it or not, under all this, but... We're going to take some of this home. It's just an exceptional plant. It makes a huge flower. Hmm. Like a... Like a sun plant. Is the camera... Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a beautiful thing going to happen now. We've got some... Look at that. Mm. Do you see that? Mm. I mean, Popping out the soil. Popping yeah. out. They're amazing. Carrots sometimes come out a bit more wet. Slimy. Look at this. This is like an entire... Mother low. Yeah, all these... And they're just such cute little nuggets. Look, there we are. <laughs> amazing. It's easy to spread some the water. And in organic soil, it doesn't matter if you eat a bit of soil. Mm. I'm already taking natural deworming herbs, so this is really like minerals. You know, you've got to understand we're made of minerals. Absolutely. But don't confuse that for synthetic particles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm just like, drink some honey shakes. Perfect. Hmm? Beautiful, fat, organic drusselin, thanks to mum. She's been a spirit for five years, but boy does she teach me how to garden. It's almost hard okay, it's to garden in an organic garden is so full of life. I don't mean hard, I mean you just got to go gently. That's why tools start to outrule themselves. Here we have an almost endangered species of little frog who's living here. So the fact that I'm using my hands to fondle through the soil, our hands don't destroy every spider and toad. So I'm going to just put her back here on the surface and she can bury herself again. And, you know, if you're gardening gently, life coexists. She's very blended in there. Will you point her yeah. out? Is your other thing? Come there on, you go. She's lovely. She's a really cute wow. angel. I haven't seen one since a kid. So please nurture this planet. This is like millennia of mm. <laughs> science, guys, of creating environments for species. So... Using your hands in the gardening is actually it's a better option. As soon as you start using machinery, you're going to be destroying countless consciousness. Which makes it boring, because human beings are consciousness, right? This soil is crawling with life. Um, I'm going to put it back here gently. I don't like to play with nature's little babies. She's just the cutest little frog. Oh my goodness. She's literally soil incarnate. Sorry, baby. My hands are a little bit hot for her comfort. She's beautiful. 
And it's so cool to see one. And I'm so glad I didn't use my great big horrific spear to stab into the soil to do a job that my gentle little paws can just... The amazing thing is I'm doing this and the spiders and everything are just going up mm. there. If I use a great big tool, you're going to be killing things. Mm. And I'm just going to leave this frog here for now. I don't need to to be in her space, mm. actually. I've got enough fruit. Yes, really. I just, you know, you know the delicate things? You just want to let them have a nice time. I'll take my big giant bucket. But I'm glad I was using my hands. And again, we're going to just um, put a little blanket back over. Whoa, little step on the bed. We, are you still rolling there? We're not going to be using the most hectic murder devices for the soil. They're useful, but you have a period of rehabilitation afterwards. Once you've turned the soil, I actually leave the beds to sleep for six months. So all the bacteria and wildlife can come back. And milk tree is my favourite. There. What I might do is put a little marker here so I know not to mess with the frogs. Perfect. Keep our town clean. Seems South Africa's got a little bit of a recycling. Uh, wait, can be there, too. there we are. What do you have to say about this, Mr. Jackson? We're rolling here. Yeah. Fantastic thing. You should have seen the town before they put it all here. So that's a huge improvement. <laughs> all we need are more of these little monuments to attract all the rubbish.